literally these people don't even read their own reports before putting out the lies. They don't even make it believable. It's ridiculous. Clearly they have no one in charge of saying, hey, if we're going to put out this false fake story and put out these false fake facts, we probably should take a look at what we, the false fake facts and lies we put out last summer. Oh, you know, know what? If Stormy Daniels and Mueller and and John McCain, they'll never pay attention because we don't care about our servicemen being slimed and lied about and arm twisted into saying shit that ain't true. Where to begin today? Boy, I tell you what, there is a lot to cover. Um, this is Stars and Stripes. Fitzgerald officer of the deck pleads guilty at court martial. Now, we've covered this before, but we got some new information here that I thought you folks would find enlightening. Because I did. I mean, boy, after having read the report a thousand times, to hear what they're actually saying now is really shocking. Let's see here. As officer of the deck on June 17, Kopik was responsible for the safe navigation of the ship. After the commanding officer went to his quarters that evening, the ship had been conducting evolutions all day, and the crew was tired. Okay, uh, Sarah Kopik was the uh, junior officer who was in charge, um, officer of the deck, during the collision last June, for anybody who's not up to speed on what we're talking about here. However, when we go to the report the Navy put out, we will go to their schedule of events. Okay, 0600 that morning, everybody comes off Liberty. 0900, navigation briefing. 1030, station scene anchor detail. 1130, underway. So they're underway at lunchtime after having come off Liberty the day before. Yeah, and they're on duty all the way, well, underway, I should say, all the way until 1210, 40 minutes later where they anchor, and then they do an ammunition onload. Okay, so, 1210, 1545, scene anchor detail, underway at 1624. So that comes out to, what, four hours and 15 minutes of work. Then we have, and probably not everybody, uh, let's see, hour later, a helicopter deck landing qualifications and aviation certifications. And modified navigation detail secured at 1800, 1835 hours. Flight operations occurred at 9. They had a day. But all day? No. No, if they had been operating from 05 to, you know, 2300 straight, maybe. But a day after off, the, literally the day you got off Liberty? No, sorry. Not buying that one. No. Oops, that's the wrong one. Hold on. Okay, so we got this lie. Here's the next lie. Okay, Kopik testified that she had been instructed by the commanding officer to maintain 20 knots even as the ship traversed heavily trafficked waters and its main navigation radar stopped working fully about an hour before the collision. Really, is that the case or not? No, it's a total freaking lie. I mean, it might be the actual case, but are they lying here or are they lying in the report? Back to the report. Remember, commanding officer, maintain 20 knots. Okay, so, all watchstanders, 2200 for that shift. 2200, the four-hour shift they have to cover. Commanding officer leaves at 2300. 2311 to 2345. Fitzgerald maintained 16 knots due to high traffic. Fitzgerald moved her to course 230 and then increased speed to 20 knots. 45 minutes after... The commander left the bridge. You'd have thought he was at 20 knots. Good night. See you tomorrow. Now, I'm sure that can be up for debate as to whether he left the order to after you do this or after you do that. Um, high traffic density. Fitzgerald maintained 16 knots due to high traffic density. That's interesting. High traffic density, 2311 to 2345. Hmm. Let's see here. Where are we? Kopik described an unspoken culture on the ship not to follow the standing orders to contact the commanding officer when the ship is within 6,000 yards of another ship, especially in that specific area. We would have had, 
we would have called him every five minutes. I've said this a thousand times. That standing order bullshit makes no sense. They were going into a into an area where they knew there was a bunch of ships. And they knew it was high traffic density. And they leave some kind of order, come wake me up if you come within five miles of something. Now we'll get down here to this uh, Copic said she was focusing on something else later. This is hilarious. Listen to this. Prosecutors laid blame at Copic's feet, saying she chose to be blind, never sought help from the information center, when it's actually the information center's job to get the information to her, did not respond properly when she saw the crystal on the radar. Remember the radar that wasn't working? Remember the radar that was unfunctional? She didn't see the radar 12 nautical miles from the ship and lost situation. She failed to sound blasts alerting the crystal or attempt to contact it at 12 nautical miles. <laughs> Nor did she alert the commanding officer that there was a ship 12 nautical miles away. Uh, yeah, okay. I, I guess I shouldn't laugh. I mean, my Navy guys are out there are probably just rolling at this point that you would use a horn sound blast to something that was 12 nautical miles away when there are dozens and dozens and dozens of ships out there. Who the hell would they think they would be blowing their horn out there at night? They wouldn't have any idea where it was coming from or what they were trying to do. It's in, I mean, this, it's just, it's nuts. Remember the, uh, the high traffic density? Uh, based on the interviews, the general consensus was it was a quiet night in the CIC before the fight tracks and nothing within 10,000 yards, six miles. Really? And here's the big lie. You ready for this? You're going to love this, guys, because we've covered the AIS so freaking much. Then, shortly after crossing into a busy shipping channel, the merchant ship ACX Crystal popped up on the CIC's commercial ship automatic identification system Dangerously close to Fitzgerald, the container ship was bearing down on the warship bow pointed toward the middle of the warship. Woodley ordered the camera used to spot targets for the ship's 5-inch gun toward the bearing of the crystal. Uh, fire Controlman 2nd Class Ash and Cato, who manned the camera, saw the flared bow of the ship fill up his monitor just seconds before the fatal crash. What the fuck are they talking about here? AIS? Really? Really? Back to the report. I, the, the, seriously, they need to work on their lies. Okay, 8.2, seamanship and navigation. Did not utilize the automatic identification system. The system provides real-time updates of commercial ship positions through the global... Yeah, we know what the AIS is. Clearly. But they didn't use it. But they did use it. Let's see. Yeah. AIS system dangerously close to Fitzgerald. Oh no, it's too late. It's on the AIS. The, the AIS that the report said you didn't use. And then of course she wasn't paying attention to the radars that they report aren't working. Beyond terrible lying. I mean, this is horrible. I mean, they did a better job of lying in 9-11. They really did. And that's saying something. And here's the thing you have to understand about a lot of people, and it took me a while to do this too. I'm, I'm not saying this to you know, denigrate anybody because I've done a lot of look into this and, and I had to stop for a minute. Okay, put yourself in the position of what's going on on the ship right before the collision. Okay, the collision happens. Let's just say that it happened the way they said it happened. We know the captain was in his quarters, allegedly, according to the report, and that he was injured and unable to respond or get to the bridge, take command of the ship. But nobody ever said that about the XO. So immediately at that point, if he was able to, he would have woken up and been in command literally immediately. You would have to assume the second in command would take command, Sean Babbitt, right? And I have this up down here. I thought I did. Let me see if I can find it. It talks about this this girl and the thing that she said about um here it is yeah 
I'll never forget the coordinates, she told the judge. I spent two hours yelling it in a radio, trying to get help. Now, okay, so if the XO wasn't injured, which they're saying he wasn't, he would have been in command literally immediately. Why would this girl have been on a radio trying to get help for two hours? She wasn't in command anymore. And according to them, the radios didn't go down until went down at 2.20, so the most it could have been would have been possibly been an hour. And they said the radio room was flooded. After I mean, so why in the hell would she... This isn't something I think she would lie about. I spent two hours yelling it in a radio, trying to get help, speaking of the coordinates of the collision. Why would she have been doing that? Not being in command of the vessel, and also not being a radio person. She is reported, her duties was she was a propulsion officer. So I very much doubt her um, general quarters would have put her anywhere near radio. I mean, the, the holes are just ridiculously huge. You could, you could drive the ACX crystal through. It, it's, it's just beyond the pale. And I had one more up here I wanted to cover. Yeah, AIS. Unbelievable. But they're saying that they didn't, uh, didn't use the AIS. Yeah, and this is it. However, the ship's executive officer, Commander Sean Babbitt, admitted to the Coast Guard during its safety investigation that he didn't completely trust Kopic and that the inclusion of Woodley in the CIC was to provide backup for a bridge watch team he said wasn't the strongest. What that means is that this guy, Woodley, who they're saying didn't do his job, was there literally to do his job. That this XO thought he was good enough to at his job to make up for some perceived failing on the part of the commanding officer, at least the officer of the deck. So that argues with the story. That Woodley was, you know, just derelict and didn't know what he was doing. Oh yeah, and Bridge having 200 contacts on its SPS 73, the one that she didn't look at, but the one that wasn't working as well. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They're reporting now that the AIS uh, did, in fact, show up the ACX crystal at the last minute, but it was too late. Yet, in the report, they state clearly that they didn't use the AIS. They're lying. Again, it's just beyond. I can't even... This level of lying, especially when you're trying to... Uh, destroy the lives of sailors, soldiers, airmen, marines, guardmen to protect a secret. I just can't abide it, so. Anyway, this shit show continues. Like, share, subscribe.